Hello everyone. So today we are going to start with a very interesting topic called as the early events in the tooth development. So we'll study how a tooth develops histologically. So it is about six weeks that is certain areas of the basal cells of the oral epithelium. They start proliferating at around six weeks and more rapidly than the adjacent areas which leads to the formation of the primary epithelial band. Each and every week which I mentioned in the slide is very very important. MCQs can be formed from this. So around six weeks in intrauterine there is area of basal cells of the oral epithelium which forms the primary epithelial band. So and after this so sixth week then seventh week. So here the primary epithelial band is formed. And in the seventh week, this primary epithelial band divides into two parts, the lingual process and the buccal process. So the primary epithelial band on, in the seventh week will divide into lingual process and the buccal process. The lingual process is known as the dental lamina and the buccal process is known as the vestibular lamina. So this is the diagrammatic representation of the formation of the dental lamina in the vestib uh, vestibular lamina. See at the sixth week the basal cells of the oral ectoderm they start proliferating and they form a primary epithelial band. This primary epithelial band which is formed by the proliferation of the oral ectoderm divides into two that is the buccal process this is the buccal process and the lingual process. The lingual process is known as the dental lamina. So this the lingual process is known as dental lamina. Whereas the buccal process is known as the vestibular lamina. Now further we will go in detail with vestibular lamina and dental lamina. Let's start with dental lamina. So as already mentioned in the previous slide, dental lamina is the lingual process of the primary epithelial band. And what is primary epithelial band? It is the proliferation of the oral ectodermal basal layer. So now we are studying dental lamina. What is its role? How is it important for the development or early development of a tooth. Dental lamina serves as the primordium. Each and every word can form an MCQ in this topic. So you have to carefully read and remember each and every point. The dental lamina serve as the primordium for the ectodermal portion of the deciduous tooth. This is the first function. Second, the permanent molars arise, they arise directly from the distal extension of the dental lamina. Third, the successors of the deciduous teeth develop from a lingual extension of the free end, which end free end of the dental lamina. So they are also known as successional lamina. So the lingual extension which gives rise to the successive teeth after deciduous dentition uh, leads to formation of the permanent dentition. That is why dental lamina is also known as the succession lamina. Fourth point which is important is the lingual extension of the dental lamina is named as the succession lamina as I mentioned it develops from fifth month in utero this is important successional lamina develops fifth month in utero that is permanent central incisor to the tenth month of age that is for the second premolar so the time period of the successional lamina because it gives rise to the successive permanent teeth is at least 5 years. This is also a key point which could be asked as the MCQs. The other lamina which is formed from the primary epithelial band is the vestibular lamina. Now as the term itself suggests vestibular 
इट फॉर्म्स द वेस्टिब्यूल सो इट इज द लेबियल एंड द बक्कल टू द डेंटल लैमिना इन ईच डेंटल आर्च द लेबियल प्रोसेस और द बक्कल प्रोसेस ऑफ द प्राइमरी एपिथीरियल बैंड leads to the formation of the vestibular lamina which leads to formation of vestibule it is also termed as the lip furrow band remember this is an important thing vestibular lamina how does it forms a vestibule first the vestibular lamina will proliferate in buccal direction that is buccally it enlarges and then cell apoptosis occurs in that region this apoptosis leads to spa uh, space which is created and this space is known as the vestibule this is how vestibular lamina leads to the formation of vestibule it is labial and buccal in direction to the dental lamina and it is also known as the lip furrow band now we'll summarize as i already all the previous slides so we have studied that around 6th week the basal cells of the oral epithelial band forms that is they proliferate they proliferate and forms the primary epithelial band then this primary epithelial band at 7th week divides into vestibular lamina that is the buccal process and dental lamina that is the lingual process of primary epithelial band now this dental lamina gives rise to primary teeth dental lamina is further divided into two extensions that is the lingual extension which is also known as the successional lamina why because it gives rise to successor teeth and the other one is the distal extension distal extension of dental lamina gives rise to permanent molars so this is how you summarize how the early events in tooth development occurs due to these two important lamina the vestibular lamina and the dental lamina let's see the meritorious prep facts which are very very important rela related to the topic of the early events in the tooth development each and every week mentioned here the number of days mentioned here the gene mentioned here in this slide can be asked in a new mcq for the mds exams so you have to take note of it so first point we are discussing is about the expression of a gene called lhx it is a protein gene which shows the earliest molecular event in the body so this is very important because lhx gene 6 and 7 expression occurs at the 9th day of the intrauterine life and this is the same time where you will see the first genetic evidence or the molecular evidence of tooth formation so the first genetic this mcq can be asked the first genetic evidence or molecular evidence of tooth formation occurs at 9th day of the intrauterine life the third point which is very important you and you have to remember is the initiation the term initiation of the epithelial band band formation which occurs at 11th day of intrauterine fight so initiation of the epithelial band formation occurs at 11th day of the intrauterine life second mcq which can be formed here is first histological evidence so first histological evidence of tooth formation occurs at 11th day of the intrauterine life then completion of the epithelial band occurs at 37th to 39th day so when they ask about the completion of the epithelial band that occurs at 37th to 39th day and in terms of week it is 6th week intrauterine so this also can be asked as an mcq for the exams then first evidence of tooth formation this has been asked in previous papers so similarly different points you can use to create your own questions that can be asked here so this is the first evidence of the tooth formation which is about 6th week intrauterine then fourth point here is proliferation of the dental lamina so proliferation of the dental lamina begins or occurs from the 7th week 7th week means 48 to 49th day intrauterine after the 7th week intrauterine vestibular lamina forms 
so proliferation of dental lamina seventh week and after seventh week we have the vestibular lamina that is formed by 11th week when 11th week comes tooth bird is large enough to be seen in unaided eyes so you will see the tooth bird formation has started by 11th week then comes the first macroscopic evidence of tooth formation that will be again seen at the 11th week intrauterine you can see that there are some changes occurring a tooth bird is forming that you can see macroscopically then at the 14th week the initiation of calcification occurs this is again an important mcq which can be asked it is 14th week when initiation of the calcium calcification begins then first radiographic evidence of tooth formation a radiographic evidence will only be seen when you have a structure or a calcified structure so that also occurs at 14th week of intrauterine after the initiation of the calcification let's begin with the frequently asked questions from the early events in the tooth development so again this is a very fact based topic where you have to remember all the weeks the days so direct question can be asked here dental lamina is active up to how much period this is the question so here one year two year four year five year if you have gone through my lecture you will remember that dental lamina the period that is also known as success uh, successive lamina is uh, at least active up to the answer is five year so this is a direct question you can uh, sure sure answer the question and get the marks another fact based question from the topic of early development of tooth or early events in tooth development is that first appearance they were asked in the question the first appearance of tooth formation again this is a very easy question if you go if you go through the theory and the lecture the answer this is a direct answer the first thing the first tooth forms at around 6th week of intrauterine period so here if you know the answer you don't have to go through all the options you can you easily score marks in such questions the correct answer is a the third frequently asked question from the topic of the early events in tooth development is the successors they've asked in the question the successors of the deciduous teeth develops from which kind of lamina or which kind of tissue so you go through the option the successional lamina the dental lamina the uh, stellate reticulum or the neutral ectodermal cells now from the options it is very obvious if you go through the terminology successional lamina the other name of the dental lamina uh, is the uh, tissue which gives rise to the successors of the deciduous teeth so the answer for this question is successional lamina